Coming up <laughs> next at the movies, the story of a young video game player who comes close to starting World War III. I have seven. Correction, eight. That's eight redbirds, two degrees past apogee. Over day, we have Soviet missile warning. Check for malfunction and report confidence. Our next film has a terrific story idea. It's the story of a bright, cheerful teenage boy who is bored by his high school classes, but enjoys fiddling around with video games and with the computer in his bedroom. At the beginning of the film, he's using his home computer to try to tap into the computer of a toy company and steal their latest video game. Instead, he winds up tapping into the top secret Defense Department computer that controls our nuclear defense system. Wow. We're in. <laughs> it thinks I'm Falcon. Shall we play a game? Let's play Global Thermonuclear War. Fine. <laughs> All right. I have seven. Correction, eight. That's eight redbirds, two degrees past apogee. Better get the old man down here. What is all that stuff? I don't know. They're trajectory headings for multiple impact re-entry vehicles. What does that mean? I don't know, but it's great. <laughs> now, at that point, that kid doesn't realize what's going on. He thinks he's just playing some kind of video game. He doesn't realize all the havoc he's creating. It's a terrific premise for a movie, and things get even wilder when Shades of Dr. Strangelove, the missile command center we saw there in Colorado, comes very close to launching a full strike against Russia when their computers, controlled by this little kid, show that Russia is sending off megatons of firepower our way. And just as all hell is about to break loose, young David, that little guy, is in the command center trying to explain what's going on. Well, David, uh... We called your parents, you know, we told them everything's fine. No charge has been filed yet. But, uh, I think we are gonna need a little time to sort things out here. How, mu how much time? Well, that depends on how willing you are to cooperate. Oh, of course. I tell you what, uh, Sergeant, would you tell the OD I'm gonna take David for a little walk? Let's go down to my office. Yes, Be more comfortable there. Go ahead. When you heard it on the news, you must have realized how serious it was. Why'd you do it again? I didn't do it again. I even threw the number away. Yeah, they found it in the trash, you know. Joshua called me. Hey, look at that. That's some setup. What'd you say? This is some setup. No, no, before that. Joshua called me. <laughs> David, uh, machines don't call people. You're dead. Who are you, uh, who are you going to Paris with? Paris? Oh, no, no, you don't understand. Now, you had reservations for two to Paris. Who are you working with? Nobody. Why don't I believe you? I don't think I should say anything else until I talk to a lawyer. I think we better forget about the lawyer crap until I get a few answers out of you myself. Now, there are a lot of questions in that scene. The little bit with the flights to Paris is another little trick he was playing on his computer. And he's right. He didn't initiate this second attempt at getting into their computer. A computer that they have is starting to play a game with itself. War Games is quite entertaining as long as it stays with that kid and his computer and the generals and the technicians in the command center, Dabney Coleman there. But toward the end, the film falls a little flat when we are introduced to an old retired scientist who preaches the very obvious anti-nuclear war point that the movie has already made in a much more entertaining way. For me, take out the old professor and War Games is terrific. With the professor, it's just very entertaining. Leave the professor in. That's fabulous because it brings it all around. It makes the movie not just a war game, mm -hmm. but a story. The basic theme of this movie is who should we trust, the computers right. or human beings? Right. And the movie starts out with the fact that there are some men who cannot bring themselves to fire missiles in a test. So right. at the end, it comes back around to men again. I think that's a very important oh, point. Apart from that, I, I agree. It's a fantastically entertaining oh, movie. Oh, very entertaining. I just think that we don't need a lecture. 
I think that this I think that this movie is so well made pictorially mm -hmm. and is so much fun and we realize that the computers are going haywire that little kids are going to get the point that we don't need the ponderous lecture that we probably would have gotten oh. in films 20 or 30 well, years first ago. First of all, it's not a ponderous lecture. The guy is a very negative person. He's not giving them a lecture about peace. He's saying this is all going to end. We're all going to get killed. What difference does it make if it happens now or next year? We know what he's saying, Raj. I mean, it's it's oh. just I don't need that guy okay, well, walking in there. Get, we're, we're having kind of a negative conversation here. Would we both agree? This is a terrifically oh, yes, entertaining I said, movie. Oh, yes, I said it's very entertaining. Yeah, I think it's one of the best films just of the year. With just one little problem. Uh, I like the whole film, including the little problem. Our next movie, Tough Enough, is a goofy little sleeper of a movie.